Welcome dear Thriver to Thriver TV. Today I want to talk to you about spiritual narcissists. How they can easily suck you in and you think this has to be a good person. But before I do, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to remind you to subscribe so that you'll get all my new videos. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and share with people who you think it might help. Okay spiritual narcissism it is so common and the thing is over the last 10 plus years and the people I know and love in my life who have been abused by narcissists so many of us are spiritual we're into personal development we're into learning and reading books and taking seminars and following spiritual teachers and it's definitely our orientation yet so many good, kind-hearted spiritual people who are into bettering themselves end up falling for narcissists. Now here's the deal. There are a lot of narcissists out there who purport to be spiritual. So they can quote to you the books they've read, the things they've learnt, their understandings. And we may hear it and we may think, well, you're spiritual. You must be a good person. You couldn't possibly be a narcissist. Both the narcissists in my life were purportedly spiritual. They seemed to have the same interests that I did, the same spiritual interests, and I really did believe we were aligned and that they were good, decent human beings who were connected to source, God, higher consciousness, and therefore could not be narcissistic. However, they were. And I cannot tell you how many times there's been people in this community who have had spiritual narcissists. And if you're listening to this video, it's more than likely happened to you. It could have been an intimate partner. It could be a family member who says how spiritual they are. It could be a spiritual teacher who you've been narcissistically abused by. It could have been a healer or a practitioner. It could have been... Uh, some kind of philosophy uh, philosophy that you were following that was spiritual that ended up being led by a narcissist. So how do we know the difference? Well, first of all, it's really vital to understand that it doesn't matter what somebody says to you and what they purport to, to be or believe in. It's their real life actions that are important. So we have to grow ourselves up to say, well, just because I'm hearing these words doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth. So how do we discern the truth? It's really about taking your time around people. If you find a spiritual teacher or that you feel drawn to, do your research, do your critical thinking, have a look into their reviews. Don't just believe the light or the glitter or the promises that they grant you. Research this person. Have a look into their reviews and their research as you would with anything in your life. And trust your gut. More than anything, listen to your inner being. But I will say this with spiritual teachers, when you're around them, do you feel uplifted? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel a resonance in your cells that this person is speaking truth to you? Soul truths. Because you will feel it. And if you feel triggered or if you feel uneasy, question. Ask. And we have to learn this in our life with everybody rather than ignoring our inner being and we think, well, other people are more of an authority than me. I must be wrong or maybe I'm mistaken or maybe I'm paranoid. Ask, reach out, ask for clarification, ask for transparency because what you will find with any so-called leaders is that if they can meet you with transparency and openness and, and proof and verification, fantastic. Whereas people who have got something to hide, hide. 
they're going to twist and turn. They'll gaslight you. They'll make you feel guilty or wrong for asking for clarification and proof about things. But I will say this, in the spiritual teachers that I've met, the ones that are authentic and wholesome and real, they may not necessarily have the most qualifications. They may not necessarily have any qualifications. I'm talking about standard academic qualifications. They may not have them. Their life and their soul source experience and their own application to their own life may be the most powerful qualifications anybody could ever have. And I will say this about spiritual teachers that are the real deal. Do they walk their talk? Do they walk their talk? Are they the type of people that inspire you? Are they the people that have broken through? Are they the people that seem like that they are dedicated to the application of what they teach? It's very, very important to have a look into people's real everyday life. So, for example, you wouldn't be getting a nutritional coach who's 30 pounds overweight. You wouldn't look for a mentor in financial expansion who is broke. So if you're looking for a spiritual teacher, is this person somebody who you want to emulate, who leads by example? It's really important. And very importantly, a spiritual teacher wants you to shine and be your best. They want to share everything with you that they have for you to not need them. If somebody is leading you spiritually and they are making you dependent on them, well then you could be entering a toxic relationship. The best spiritual masters want you to be a master of your own life and your own inner being and your own destiny. That's really important to know. So I guess the biggest message is, is your discernment, your research. We have to grow up beyond the point of just blindly trusting people because what comes out of their mouth looks all really pretty and promising and spiritual. We have to grow up to be adults that look after ourselves. Now in relation to, you may have family members or be in an intimate partner relationship with somebody who professes to be all spiritual and they can have all the concepts but do they apply it in their own life how do you know if somebody is applying spirituality in their own life the humility to be honest about their flaws is one of the biggest things that you can see which grants you authenticity somebody who says I know this is my stuff I know I need to work on it. I have flaws. I'm human. I'm healing. I'm growing. I'm expanding. When you get the guru kind of uh, archetype in people, the guru archetype is I'm already transcended. I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. And what I say is it. You do not want to be connected or handing over your life force, your attention, your love and your devotion to anybody who plays that game. Because really you're looking at narcissism. And what is narcissism? The basis of narcissism is I am not the generative source of my own experience. I am not humbled to source and my soul connection. I'm God. I'm right, everybody else is wrong, and I will put up every defense mechanism around myself to defend that to my death. That's narcissism. That's not a spiritual leader. If you're going to follow that, you're handing your soul and your life force over to a false source, disconnecting you from your own source-soul connection, which is discernment, empowerment, sovereignty, your truth, which is nobody else's, and your ability to be your generative force in life, radiating, filling with, and creating 
love, approval, survival and security for yourself and others as a shining example. If you hand over your source soul connection to an outer force who has got the guru complex, if there's nothing wrong with me, there's no growth to do, I am beyond reproach, I am never wrong, I am never apologetic, I'm never humble, there's nothing to learn or grow here, you're in deep water. So I really want you to come home to discerning the difference and to know you are your guru. You are your source soul connection with what's right for you, what's true for you, what your inner soul and source is leading you to and how when you honor your soul, source soul connection and grow it into wholeness and fullness, of course you're going to be humble, of course you're going to grow, you're going to keep up leveling. But you will be flourished and nourished beyond your wildest dreams because source has your back that's not somebody else's job outside of you it's your job directly with source so the best of spiritual teachers are going to bring you home to you and your source soul connection i really want you to understand that because i see so many gorgeous beautiful people in our community which i used to do too abjugate my own responsibility to that whole sovereign connection and hand it to somebody else and give them full permission and responsibility with it. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to lead ourselves home and show the way to others. I hope this really makes sense and I just want to say to you if you feel like you're struggling with a spiritual narcissistic relationship because they're very common it happens so much because narcissists feel a lot of internal pain and they often go to spiritual understandings and knowings to get kind of some sign of some sort of relief and self-medication and then they can say oh, i'm all spiritual and it helps them mine and groom and exploit people it's very common for, for narcissists to go there and I'm not telling you that to freak you out. I'm telling you that so that you can become awake and steer yourself consciously in amongst all of this. And I would really, if you're struggling, I'd love to offer you my 16-day free course, which you can, the link is with this little video, but uh, it's and it's in the show notes. You can, with my free course, it's 16 days and two uh, very comprehensive ebooks, which are going to help you unravel all of this and get clear and start coming home to your true power source filled self. And also, too, I want to put up a link for NARP, which is my signature program that has helped so many people release trauma dependencies and trauma bonds and fill with source which is where it's all at so check that out all right i hope this has helped so much love to everybody and keep smiling keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do lots of love bye bye